When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend to my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because of him, but because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. We read today's lectionary passage in loving memory of Rachel Held Evans, woman of valor, uh, mother of the diaspora, champion of the forgotten, who passed on to the ancestors Saturday morning, May 4th. And our community grieves. Uh, our community mourns and laments and cries out at the unfairness, the, the, the shock At the, at the face of death that we have been presented with. And yet, this is what Rachel had to say about death. In her last published words this year's, on this year's Ash Wednesday, she wrote that death is a part of life. My prayer for you this season is that you make time to celebrate that reality and to grieve that reality and that you will know that you are not alone. In Searching for Sunday, she writes that death is something empires worry about. It's certainly not something resurrection people worry about. Rachel's own words doesn't take away from the magnitude of the pain that everyone is experiencing, most especially um, her husband and her two kids and her friends um, that were closest to her. But as I've been sitting on Twitter um, for the better part of this weekend, going through and reading the stories of the individual stories, the communal stories of people's connection to Rachel and and what Rachel has meant to to the lives and and the vocations of so many. The amount of women who attribute their, their call to pastor to the work that Rachel did, the amount of queer folk who have attributed their courage in coming out and getting free to Rachel, the amount of people of color who attribute honor and valor and goodness and grace and dignity and covering to the work that Rachel did is astounding. In her 37 years, Rachel has left a legacy of calling that is undeniable. And here when Jesus instructs Peter and says, tend to my lambs, tend to my sheep, follow me. There are few that we can say that read the word of God and walked it out with such integrity, 
such boldness and such deep resolve as Rachel has. Choosing to align her life with the forgotten, with the marginalized, with the oppressed. Standing at the gate and ushering spiritual refugees out of abuse and trauma and problematic systems that destroy and into a new world and a new reality and a new kingdom where there's hope and goodness and abundance and justice. Rachel, woman of valor, pave, has paved the way for so many to do the deep, deep work of transforming this world for good. Few, if any, could hold a, a, a candle to her brilliance, a light to her resolve and her strength and her commitment. And my prayer, as I read this Sunday's lectionary passage, and I reflect on this deep loss and the pain and lament and the grief that is striking our community, my prayer is that Rachel would remain to all of us, a beacon of hope, of grace, of love, that we would make her proud by standing up in the ways that we must stand up by writing the thing that we are terrified to write about, write the book or the blog posts, um, take the call, the vocation, the thing that causes us to tremble most as we read the instructions to protect the forgotten and the abused and the outcast, would we make Rachel proud? By looking on to the life that she lived and modeling our own lives after it and the ways that she modeled her life after Jesus and never giving up, and never leaving anyone behind, choosing a life of profound humility and love, but with a voice that pierced and tore down injustice, that cried out prophetically against religious systems and structures and political realities that abuse and destroy life. Would we too pick up that work and continue in that work and continue to labor in the ways that she labored as gardeners? Planting a new reality. Planting hope. Planting seeds of goodness. for the world that is to come. So as we mourn, as we grieve, I pray that we would find rest and courage. And Rachel, may you rest in the power that you gave to all of us. In the name of Christ, who is Lord. Amen.